Hello, Just Too Good here. Back to another very exciting review because today we're reviewing a very big Lego set. And you know, I don't really review big Lego sets so often, even though I have a lot lately. Um, and this is set number 79117. It's called the Turtle Lair Invasion. This is based on the new Ninja Turtles movie and it's part of the Ninja Turtles movie line. And it has 888 pieces, six minifigures, and retails for $100 in the United States. Uh, without further ado, let's take a look at the packaging. The box for this set is massive, and since my light box is so small, I kind of have to zoom out and you can see some corners of my light box. But it's a very awesome box. It's definitely going to pop off the shelf. Because I love the coloring on this kind of border right here, and I love this little border part right here. Very, very cool. The top, it shows all six of the minifigures. On the back, you see some of the play features. Very cool. Shows all the little play features, and... Also, you get two instruction booklets with very high quality. Uh, they don't have any specific ads that we haven't seen in any other sets, but you can see there's one right there and then two. So that's really cool, nice quality, and now onto the minifigures. All right, before I start this minifigure close-up, I just wanted to show all the Movieverse turtles together. Now, I use their most neutral face where they're not showing any teeth whatsoever, and to get those, the only one that comes in this set that I'm reviewing right now is Donatello because he's not showing any teeth in this set, and that's the only way you could get him. Uh, but this one right here, Leonardo, he only comes with this face in the turtle or the snow rig getaway. And then these two turtles right here, Raphael and Michelangelo, only come with these faces in the um, turtle van takedown. Now, to get all the turtles together, the best way to get it is getting the, the Lair set, which is the set I'm reviewing right now, and the Turtle Van Takedown set, because that's only $140, and you get Michelangelo, Raphael, Leonardo, and Donatello. But the Turtle Van Takedown set comes with these two turtles, of course, with uh, Raphael having a different expression showing his teeth. So that's kind of weird, because it's the middle set, and it has no exclusive turtle character in there, even though it does have exclusive printing on them. So I just want to show all of them together, and I want to say that I'm also going to be doing a comparison of Donatello and Leonardo in this set compared to this version and his cartoon version, and Donatello compared to his cartoon version, and the other minifigures like uh, Shredder compared to his cartoon version, and the Foot Soldier compared to their cartoon version. So stay tuned for that after the minifigure close-up, and let, without further ado, let's get to the minifigure close-up. All right, so here is Donatello, and you can see this version and this character alone is exclusive to this set. So if you want to get the movie verse of Donatello, the movie verse version, you have to buy this set. So that kind of makes an incentive to get this set. And you can see his weapon right here is the same weapon that he uses in basically the Ninja Turtles cartoon sets. Where's this little staff? Very simple build. It's made out of three pieces, two poles on the side, and then the little telescope piece in the middle. And then looking at his torso and his legs, both of them are exclusive. And his legs right there are actually a very cool design because it's very neutral. It's not really specific to Donatello. And this is the only way you could get those legs. So that's very nice. And looking at the rest of the minifigure, you can see he has this headgear attachment right here for these tech goggles. If you want to take those off, all you have to do is give them a slight pull. And the way you put those on is you put these little clips on, which you can see right there, the smoke clips, onto those indents on the side right there. And you push it on very carefully. And there you go. So it works kind of like a helmet visor for the space theme. And you could actually raise and lower it like that. And they work quite well. And looking at his facial printing, it's pretty well done. And his back. He has this little thing attached to his turtle shell, which looks like a little bit of tech gear, which has this little switch right here. But you can easily take that off because the turtle shell has that little clip on the back or that um, receiving stud. And it's cool because his turtle shell on the back has this nice kind of uh, dark brown color or kind of a light. It looks a little bit like a caramel color. And this is the only way you can get that in plain because the only other way you can get a colored shell like this is with the Leonardo minifigures from the movieverse. But those have this kind of weird printing all around them. So if you want to get just the plain printing, you have to get the Donatello minifigure. And that's really it for Donatello. Just a look at his back torso printing, which is the same for all the other turtles. All you have to do is take off his headpiece like that and then remove his turtle shell. And you can see his back torso printing just has that same printing that's found on all the other Movieverse turtles. So here is Leonardo. And this version of Leonardo is exclusive to the set because of his face printing. But the actual character of the Movieverse Leonardo isn't exclusive because you can get the neutral face from the, uh, I think it's Snow Rig Getaway. And you can see that he has the same torso printing and leg printing as that version. 
and he has the same kind of attachment and turtle shell as that version where his attachment is this little sword holder right there and basically how you take it off is it's kind of made with this little peg right here and this is exclusive mold just for the Ninja Turtles movie line and you can take out the sword holsters like that and they're just your regular katana pieces and you can see the printing on his back turtle shell is very well done and that's really it for the Leonardo minifigure. Here is Master Splinter, and out of all these minifigures, I do have the cartoon counterparts, except for Splinter, so I cannot do or include him in the comparison later on. But you can see this actually uses the same mold as a cartoon version, uh, for his head at least, which is very interesting because it's a totally different coloring overall from this one. This one looks a lot more realistic and even more scary because it's less cartoony, and the mold itself is more of a cartoony mold. But he does have a very kind of cool torso right there, um, short legs in that tan color, unlike the cartoon version, which has kind of that sloped dress plate piece and kind of a red printing. And you can see he does have some back torso printing and a little katana right there. And if you want to take off his headpiece to see the inside of it, you just pull it off like that and you can see kind of how it's made. Very interesting molding for me because I haven't seen this really before. But of course, like I said, it is the same one involved in the Turtle Lair set from the cartoon universe for Master Splinter. So that's it for Splinter from this set. Here's probably my favorite minifigure from the set, Shredder. And this is the only minifigure out of this whole line that I think looks better compared to the cartoon counterpart than the cartoon counterpart. Because this guy looks awesome. He is exclusive, at least this version, you know, the movieverse version, is exclusive to this set. But he is really, really, really well done. You can see he uses the same claw pieces as the cartoon versions. But if you take those off, you can see he just has regular hands. And his torso printing is extremely awesome. I just love that. But looking at his helmet, it's the same molding as the cartoon version, except he has some different printing right there, which is really cool too. And let's just take a look at the back of that molding. And his face is probably the most disappointing part of this minifigure because it's just Lex Luthor's face from Super Heroes. And it was involved in some other Superman sets too. Uh, but I wish they would have included the cartoon version, which has kind of the burn on his face. But just getting past that part, which is easily um, able to be replaced, you know, by the actual cartoon version, uh, you can see his little visor right here is really cool. This little shoulder pad piece. I mean, it's really well done. It's a new molding altogether exclusive to this movie verse line and exclusive to this minifigure in general. And you can just see the detailing with that. It has some spikes on the side and it has this little part on the front too. You'll later see when I compare the two versions how it's different to the other molding. Uh, but he does use the same kind of molding for the cape. Which is in this dark bl blue color. And you can see his front torso print and legs right there. Awesome. It's, it has a shining silver on it, which is really cool. And his back torso is really awesome too. But it's nearly identical to the front, it looks like. Except that has some different positioning on the straps. But that's really it for this minifigure, and now on to the next. All right, so here is the Foot Soldier. You do get two of the exact same versions in this Turtle Lair set. So just keep that in mind, so it brings a total to six minifigures in this set. Um, same versions as the one from the Turtle Van Takedown. You can see he has some nice torso printing and leg printing. And I like this version of the face compared to the one from the Big Rig Getaway or whatever. And you can see his back torso printing right there. So that's it for this minifigure. Okay, so first up with the comparisons, let's take a look at Leonardo. Compared to his other movie version, they're exactly identical all around, except this one in this version, which is the one right here, has a different face than the one in the turtle or the big rig snow getaway. And you can see this one has just him showing his teeth, and then this one just has a regular smile. Comparing the foot soldier found in this set, which is the one right here, to the one found in the snow rig getaway or whatever it's called, you can see that they're exactly identical all around. Except the one on this side right here has a different face than the one from the Snow Rig Getaway, which I was notified that this one right here, the Snow Rig Getaway one, has kind of a mask over his face. So that's it. Okay, comparing the movie version to the cartoon version of Donatello, you could see they are very different in terms of printing and molding on their turtle shells in their heads. So you can see that the one in this version has much more realistic kind of printing, and the one in the cartoon versions has different printing. That makes it more look a little bit more cartoony. Um, this version actually doesn't come in any set in particular. I actually mismatched a few pieces, because the headpiece itself is from the T-Rocket set, which I think best fit compared to um, this version because he has the goggles. But the actual body isn't from that set because it's just his normal kind of body. 
and you can see the one from the T rockets that kind of has that different torso. Uh, but comparing them all together, you can see this one doesn't have any attachments to the side of his head or anything like that, unlike this one, because there's no indent pieces there. Also, this one has kind of a shell that has this little indent piece right here, which is not found on the cartoon versions. And that's really it. Other than that, you know, they have different printing on their torso and their legs. And this one's kind of this more olive color compared to this light green color. So that's it comparing the two versions of Donatello. In the movie version of Leonardo to the cartoon version of Leonardo, at least the one found in this set, you can see they are very different too in the same ways as Donatello basically. And all around, you can see it's kind of sad because the cartoon version can't hold any swords unlike the movie version which could hold swords because it has that indent on the back then the sword holster attachment. So that's kind of sad, but other than that, I do like the cartoon version just because it looks more, I guess, um, pleasing aesthetically. This one, it looks a little bit too realistic and it doesn't really fit the tone of LEGO, but I am very glad that they made them so detailed because it just goes to show that LEGO really can stay close to a source material with the limited um, you know, product that is a minifigure. So they really did a good job on these movie turtles, as bad as I think they look because they just look weird in the movie in general. But I have to give it to LEGO because these are some of the best designed minifigures because they're just so close to the source material. So that's it for these minifigures. And now on to comparison of some of the villains compared to the cartoon versions. Like I said, unfortunately, I don't have the Splinter cartoon minifigure. But I do have all the Shredder versions from the cartoon and from the movie. So you could actually see a full comparison by looking at my last review, which was of the Flashback Shredder minifigure. But just a quick comparison of this movie version compared to the cartoon version, which the movie version is right here. You can see the movie version is much more detailed, but it doesn't look any less cartoony. So I love this version because it's just, it's not like uncanny like the Turtles, but it's really, really awesome looking, very menacing looking with his torso print. Um, compared to this torso print right here. Um, but even though this looks like an awesome minifigure too. I just don't like how he doesn't have the burn marks or anything like that. But I'm sure that's very close to the source material. But the most interesting comparison is their shoulder pads. Because this one right here is much more violent I guess. Because it has these little spikes on the side. And it has this front kind of spiky part. Um, but this one is literally just these shoulder pads with like three spikes on each side. Um, so this one's much more detailed. And their torso printing in general you can see that they're kind of a little bit different. This one on the back has more of a robe look, and this one has just more of a metal look, the movie version one. So kind of interesting comparing the two. All right, so here is the foot soldier from the movie verse, which is included in this set, compared to the foot soldier from the cartoon universe. You can see the foot soldier from the movie sword or movie universe has more of a, I guess, a, a military-like look um, than the cartoon one, which has more of kind of a foot soldier from the ancient times look. Um, this one has a gun, while this one just has a little mace right there, which is kind of funny. And this one has even a sword holster on the back, but this one just has some like back parts for like grenades and ammo. So that's just kind of an interesting comparison right there. Here's the turtle layer all together, very massive. I just want to show a quick look at how it all comes together. Because what you see is it's connected by these little parts right here. So once you move it around, uh, they're actually just these little kind of pegs right here. So you lift it up and it separates because there's this little hole right here. And you put the little peg in the hole. And that's how baby's made. And then you can look at the back of this kind of turtle layer right here by kind of switching it to the back. And it's very easy to move around and whatnot. And you can see how that connects right there. Same way and everything just comes together. So now we're going to take a look at each individual part um, separately. Before I took a look at this middle section, which will be the first section we take a look at. And I just wanted to kind of show some of the vehicles that come in the set. The first vehicle is this little motorcycle right here. Nothing too interesting, but it's nice to get a motorcycle. And also this little frame right here is actually exclusive to the set besides it coming in one other set, which is an $18 Lego City set, which is called the Police Chase. But other than that, it is exclusive. So it's nice to get kind of a rarer little motorcycle frame right there. So that's a nice little throw in. And this is actually what the foot soldiers are supposed to use as their vehicle. And you could just pop a foot soldier on like that and kind of wheel him around as a little play feature. Then next up is Leonardo's skateboard. I already put Leonardo on there, but it's just a basic blue skateboard. Nothing special there. But that's it for that little vehicle. And now on to the main, you know, little section of the center. And 
it's kind of interesting. It's probably the my, maybe my least favorite part of this whole set, or at least, you know, out of the three segments. And the middle part right here has this little sticker right here, which looks like a target practice for a foot soldier. But that's a sticker right there. And just taking a look all around, there's this little lever right here, which actually uses a play feature, which we'll show later. And on the back, there's this little fan. But the thing with the fan, it's kind of interesting. It goes hand in hand with the play feature. But basically, it's not really anything that's clipped on by a stud or anything like that. It's just a little segment that you're supposed to remove right there. And you could kind of put that, you know, there. And there are these two little boxes here, which are also loose. But you could put them on these two studs that they leave open, too, if you want to, you know, not make them loose. But the little play feature is that you click this thing back here, this little lever piece, and the whole thing falls over. So it's just a cute little play feature, nothing too special. Um, and I, I'm not too mad that, you know, it's not connected by any studs in like particular, um, but it would have been nice if it was connected by some studs. But other than that, you can see there's this little sticker right here, and then there's a sticker on the bottom once you remove that piece, little center piece right there with the fan. And you can see how that play feature works. But other than that, you could move on to the top by maybe climbing this ladder or making a turtle climb this ladder. And moving on to the top feature right here, you kind of see where it's connecting to other parts, which I showed earlier, where it connects by using this little piece right here. And there's this big little vault looking thing, but basically what that is, is once you open it, it reveals this inside part right here which is actually a barrel launching feature. So what you're supposed to do is there's this little piece right here, which is connected by a hinge. And what you're supposed to do is grab this little barrel that they leave right here and crack. this little play feature just broke on me. That's great. And it's very easy to fix, which is good. So basically, oh, that's great. That is great. You see? Ah, okay. So basically what you're supposed to do is put this little barrel right here and click back on that and you can see the barrel just launches really far so a cute little play feature it's always nice to get these little cute little play features but not like the greatest or most uh unique play feature out there and you can see that's the part where i was saying that it connects to the other part and we could just close up the bolt again and you can see there's this little sticker right here and then going on to the top there's this sticker right here and all the way at the top platform there's this little fan sticker, it looks like, right up there. And so that is it for this whole thing altogether. Also, I wanted to show kind of how this little vault feature works. Basically, um, you can't open it when it's like this because this little peg right here is blocked by this little handle right here. But you're supposed to kind of wheel up the handle and put it down like that, and then you could open it. So it has a nice locking feature that I really do like. And that's really it for this build altogether. And now let's take a look at the next segment. Now taking a look at the left part, which is the left segment, uh, it's probably the shortest of the three, but it also has some cool little play features. Uh, but you can see it connects by using that part right there to the part we just looked at, which was the middle part. All you have to do is wheel this up and then put that right there. And it's connected. So that's really kind of cute. And looking at this little segment right here, uh, there's not any like super special play features, but there are some really cool little hidden parts. In particular, if you look at this bottom part right here, there's this little kind of lever right here, this platform. And what you're supposed to do is push it, and it reveals this little side down here in gold. So that's kind of a cool little hidden play feature. And you could just wheel it back, and it becomes their stairs again. And you can kind of see where the side hides in there, but there's not really anything else in there. On the side, you can see there's this little sticker right here. And no stickers on the side right there. And on the back, there's a sticker right there. And then there's some more weapons inside this part. But what this is, is basically the big gate, I believe, where the Shredder, where Shredder and the Foot Clan kind of break in. But there's this gate right here, and you can wheel it up and down. And then you can kind of make it locked whichever place you want by pushing this little lever down like this. And it just kind of makes it stay in place. So if you put it all the way up here, you would push that down, and then there you go. It stays in place. And this is a cute little play feature, too. And also, it's interesting to note that these little side panel pieces right here in that dark gray color, 
I believe only come in one other set, which is Arkham Asylum from 2013. So that's cool that you get kind of a rarer piece. And you can kind of make the date drop down any way you like. But it kind of holds it really, really well. And that's really it for the whole little segment right here, except a look at the top. You see there's not really much on the top, but some little details to make it look a, more, a little bit more rugged or a little bit like the sewers because you get this little handle right here too. And that's really it. And now on to the next segment, which will be the far right. What is probably my favorite part of the whole set out of the three segments and how it connects is basically it connects to the middle part, which was the first part we looked at by putting this peg from the middle part in there. And there you go, it's connected. But this part has basically all the content or all the really awesome play features of the set. But first we'll take a little pan up to see how this all comes together. And now let's take a look at the bottom of this little center or this little far right part. There's some nice little cute little details of some stickers and whatnot. You got a sticker right here, which is this little graffiti right here, there. And you got this whole kind of control panel part right here with some computer screens and whatnot, which is really awesome because even though these are six different stickers, they were fairly easy to put on and they really kind of connect to make it look really cool. It looks like there's a map right here and then there's some levels and then some more maps. That's really awesome. And then there's even a keyboard in the middle right there. So that's a nice little sticker, but keep in mind these are all stickers. So if you don't like stickers, this might be a little pain for you. Um, also right here, there's these two pizzas, which is cool, but they really are just on the floor. So I guess the turtles eat really messy. <laughs> also, there's this little chain right here, and it really goes nowhere else in the set. And I, I was kind of worried that maybe I built it wrong or whatnot, but all you're supposed to do is put this little chain on the bottom like that. There are these little uh, studs right here, so you could connect it like that, but they don't tell you to do that. Um, but I may just end up doing that, connecting it right there, because it's kind of annoying me. Uh, so there's this little seat right here. And basically, why it looks so weird, they basically use that swivel part in the middle, but they didn't put the whole chair on there. Instead, they put this little vent right here. But that's basically to discern that this is supposed to be for the turtles, and how you put them there is you just put them at the edge of the chair. And the turtle shells do fit, but it looks like you can't use Leonardo, because you got to take off his little back part. So... All you have to do is take off his back, little peg part that holds his swords, and he fits on there really, really well. So that's a nice little detail, and it's nice that you could fit the turtles on a little chair. So that's it for the bottom part. There is a little sticker right there, I don't know if I point that out. Some more graffiti. And looking at the sides, not much going on there. There's actually a little bottom part, but there's nothing in there either. And you can see there's some little function right here, but we'll take a look at that later. So now going on to the top of the layer, Let's see, there's this middle section right here, which is kind of the middle of the slide, which is another play feature, but there are some little play features here. There's this little gate right here, which looks pretty cool. And then looking at the back, there's this little part right here, and basically what that's supposed to be is for this little trap door feature on the top where if you kind of move it up it'll the trap door will fall and it looks like something else just fell too it was a barrel but we'll take a look at that later because the trap door is all the way at the top um, but also there's this little play feature right here which if you push this it kind of makes a gate so when somebody's falling down the slide it'll get stopped right there and also there's this little part right here which i looked at at the bottom but it pushes the gate up and it kind of holds it down like that so we're at the middle, and let's take a look at the far top. And it's going to be a little bit hard. But here is all the way at the top. You got that little sticker right there, which I guess this is outside of the turtle layer, and this is actually on the streets. But there's a sticker right there, which kind of shows some graffiti and some little tech parts. And there's also this little part right here, which looks like a little control panel to maybe open or close the layer. And that is that little trap door feature I was talking about. Basically, like I said, how you push it open is you push this and it pushes open like that. But if you move that on the back and you push this down, you can see it closes like that. So it's a nice little feature. Also, there's this little uh, man hole right there. And there's this slide right here. And this slide is actually a really cool play feature. Basically, what you do is you put a minifigure on the slide, 
and we'll watch it go. So put a minifigure right there. And you can see he folds to the middle. But if you don't have this part right here and you don't have this part raised on the bottom, and you put it from the top again, he folds all the way to the bottom. So that's an awesome play feature. Really awesome slide, probably the best slide that LEGO has put out. This is just such a cool little mechanism. And yeah, that's really it for this whole design altogether. And last look at this part right here. Very, very cool segment. Definitely my favorite, like I said. And that's it for the set, and now on to the final verdict. Overall, what do I think of this set? I love this set. I love the Turtle Lair from 2013, even though I never really owned this set. I played with it at the LEGO store once, actually. Um, and I wish I would have got that set. And that's actually the only set that made me not do a top 10 of 2013 for LEGO sets uh, last year. But this set is basically that, but better in mostly every way. Um, I say mostly because some of the minifigures, you know, I like the cartoon minifigures better than these. But for some, even like Shredder looks much better than the cartoon version, even though I love the cartoon version. Uh, but just taking a look at this set, it is massive, but it works perfectly. It's so fun to play with, but it's an awesome display piece. It's not recognizable in terms of people saying, oh, that's going to be the one from the movie. They're going to say, oh, that's the turtle lair. All you have to do is add turtles to this, and they're going to be like, that's an awesome turtle lair. And it works perfectly that way. I love how it came out. I love how it connects because usually with these big sets, they're either all scattered or they're really hard to take apart when they're connected, um, even though they're meant to be taken apart and whatnot. Um, kind of like the Vampire Castle set, which I love, but it was kind of a pain to take apart and stuff like that. But this one, it's so easy to take off because there's these little clips right here. All you have to do is remove it like that. Bam, it, it, you could separate it easily and it's easy to transport and whatnot. Also, there's not a lot of really scattered parts. I mean, once you connect all of those together, it's only really the minifigures and then like two vehicles that are kind of scattered. Um, granted, there's also this part right here, but we're not going to talk about that part. Um, and the pieces in this set are really cool too. You do get some nice kind of, you know, darker color pieces, kind of like this whole line. Um, for example, you get two brown slides, which um, all are only really in that Lone Ranger mindset besides this set. Uh, you do get some nice panel pieces. You do get some awesome minifigure pieces, like exclusive molds for Shredder. Um, some nice coloring for Donatello, who's exclusive to this set. Um, the Splinter minifigure, who's exclusive. I mean, there's actually three exclusive character minifigures in this set, which are Movie Shredder, Movie Donatello, and Movie Splinter. But all the minifigures besides the two foot soldiers are exclusive to the set. So Leonardo also has an exclusive printing to this set, which is really kind of cool. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. No pun intended, and I don't even think I use that right. Uh, but just overall, for $100, you get your money's worth. It's an awesome display piece. It's an awesome piece to play with. I love all the little play features with the exploding parts. The slide feature is just so fun to play with. Um, the, you know, the little secret hidden stuff, like when you reveal this door, there's stuff inside there, or even under the floorboards, like right here, there's this little part. So I have to give this set an A. Where they could have improved? Well, four minifigures, like I said, two aren't exclusive. Would have been nice to get two exclusive foot soldiers, but that's a very, very small flaw. Also, 888 pieces for $100 isn't the perfect price per piece ratio. Um, and that's really kind of it. I mean, there's not re really the only other stuff are very, very minor details. But for the most part, I love this set. Love how it came out. And it really makes me want to get the Ninja Turtles cartoon version of this turtle lair. So that's really it for this review. Definitely check this set out. And I will see you guys later. Bye.